Okay, hi there everyone. So we're going to do a run through of an estimated position question. So in this situation, we're going to do question six and I'll run through it. So using the log extract below, plot the estimated position at 1425 SPDST. Okay, so SPDST, I'm just making a note that's important. Okay, the date is the 12th of October. So that's going to be important later on as well. Uh, we're travelling from 13.55 until 14.25. Okay, so this is a bit odd because we're travelling, if it was for an hour, it would be until 14.55, but we're actually just travelling for half an hour. Yeah, so we're just travelling half an hour between those two. So another note to self. In that time, we have travelled, I think, 6.5 miles. Okay, so travelling 6.5 miles in half an hour, so... That does mean that we're travelling at a speed of 13 knots. Compass course is 30 degrees, sorry, 300 degrees. Uh, compass, there's no leeway. And the depth is 22 metres at the start and 20 metres at the finish. So first of all, what we're going to do is just in terms of our priority, so step one is going to be Plot position. Okay. Step two is going to be plot the dead reckoning. So this is going to be our course plus distance. Step three is going to be the tidal vector. So this can be broken up into various sections. So that's going to be finding out. Yeah, so Victoria is our standard port, so information from Victoria, the tidal hour we're in, okay, and uh, springs, neeps, and we need to remember to, It's only for 30 minutes, so we must divide by 2 at the end. So I'm just making a note of this now, so we don't forget to do that towards the end. Okay. And it is with question 6, it's telling us tidal diamond N. Okay, which is handy, so that's good. We don't need to go looking for that. And that's about it. And then it also has question B, what is the cog and sog? Yeah, so once we've plotted our tidal vector, that's going to give us our... EP lat and long. So that's going to be the answer for question for part A. And then five is cog and sog. Okay, so there's our stages and steps. So first of all, I need to find where I am on the chart. So we've got 45, 47.41 north. So I know that that I look at my lat and long down the edge of the chart here. So I've got 46.10, so I'm going to have to unfold my chart because I'm further south of that. And I'm also just going to check, so the 05.42. Okay, so that is also, if I look at the central, uh, I've got 6 degrees west here. So 05.42 uh, west, oops, sorry, there we go, is actually east of this position. So I need to go south and east, as you'll find most of these questions tend to be. So I'm just going to unfold the chart. Okay. Move my baggage out of the way. There we go. So... First of all, we're going to go and find our latitude. Always start with the latitude. So 4547. So here's 4550, 4545. There's a little bit of blur going on here. But. So 4547, 67 is here. Uh, 0.41. So that's we're going to call that 0.4. Just there. Okay. So there's that. And now I'm just going to line this up on here. I'm not going to draw the line on just yet. Okay, got that parallel. And now I'm looking for my longitude. So longitude is 0542. So 
0550, 0540, 41, 42. So first of all, I know I can put my latitude somewhere around here. So 41, 42, which is a little bit hard to see, uh, 0.5. about here so I can just and conveniently it also gives us the depth of 22 meters and um, we're on 22 meters so this is 1355 SPDST I'm also just going to mark question 6 on here. Okay, so I've got my fix sorted. Now I need to plot my course. So my course is, so first I'm starting with course of 300 degrees compass. Okay, so Cadbury's dairy milk is very lovely and tasty. Okay, we've all, we know that there's no leeway in this situation, so actually that's out the question so I'm going to check my deviation card right at the back of the book and so 300 degrees compass ships heading compass 300 degrees it's it's going to be five degrees west because we're seven and a half degrees off that one there so five degrees west yeah so cadet Compass to true, add east, we've got west. We're going from compass to true, so we're gonna subtract it. That's gonna give me 295 degrees magnetic. The variation is six degrees west in this area, also a subtraction, no leeway. So it's gonna give me a true of 289. Okay, 289 degrees, true. Cool. For my dead reckoning, I'm going to be plotting this course and the distance of my dead reckoning is 17.9 uh, minus 11.4. Uh, I'm just writing this out just because it's going to make me less likely to make a mistake. Or if I do make a mistake, at least I can find out where I've done my rubbish maths. Uh, so quite simply 17.5, 6.5, yes, 6.5 nautical miles travelled. Okay, so now using my plotter, 289 is here. My course, my sorry, my fix is there. And I'm just going to swing this around. And plot that on there. Now you can see actually, I've plotted my line all a little bit north of my fix so I'm actually going to rub it out and just start building it. The good thing about using HB pencil is that it rubs out really cleanly on the chart so you don't need to leave your chart looking like it's been in a war zone. Okay and now I just need to measure my 6.5 miles Okay, so I've measured my 6.5 miles, and that is going to take me So again, what I can do just to keep things tidy is just rub everything upwind of that. Except ignore the upwind part of that, that's not totally accurate, but it's just not relevant right now. Okay, so there's my dead reckoning. So this is my DR at 14.25. Okay, so I should also have my one arrow because this is my ship's heading. It's 289 degrees true and it is 6.5 nautical miles. Okay, so I've got all the information on the chart there. And I'm all good to go. So I, I've got my. I don't need to take my Latin long of that because dead reckoning is relatively irrelevant in this situation. So now I'm looking for my tidal vector. 
So first of all, I know that I'm on tidal diamond N, but it's not very useful to me until I know what tidal hour I'm in. So I need to go to, as ever, Victoria. The date is the 12th of October. 12th of October is here. And we are traveling at 1355 SP DST. If I'm going to make things easy, so I'm just gonna make sure I pick the right tidal hour, 1355. SP DST is the same as 1155 UT. So I just need to make sure that I have my high water closest to there. So 12th of October, I have a high water of 1425. That's pretty damn close. Okay, so happy days. So that is the relevant information for me there. I can see that doesn't really matter if I go wrong with my low water because the heights of low water are actually the same either side of it. Okay, and it's the time I'm mostly concerned about. But I am going to be falling in between uh, 0811 and 1425 UT. <clears throat> so, getting this down, so I've got my... Victoria, uh, so low water comes first, so low water is 0811 UT, I don't care about that too much, I care about the 1.6 metres, high water is 1425 UT and that is 5 metres. Just checking I've got the right times and date. Yep. So this as a range is going to give me 3.4 metres. That's useful to know because this tells me that I am definitely somewhere in the middle of springs and neeps. Just thinking about that ahead of time, I know that because on my curve here for Victoria, springs is 4.9, neeps is 2.4. I'm 3.4, so I'm slightly closer to neeps, but I'm very much somewhere in the middle. Okay, so we're going to need to interpolate that using either some extremely good guesstimated skills or using our lovely uh, computation of rates type table. So 1425 UT. So there's, there's two things we can do here. We can either bring our high water time Victoria into the local time so that we can work on the same time scale as our question in 1355, or we can do the opposite, which is to convert our time, local time back to UT and work in that situation there. It doesn't really matter which you do. Um, it's kind of down to preference. So in this situation, I'm going to, I've already converted my 1355 start time to 1155 UT. So I'm going to make, might as well stick with that. So 1425 high water, Victoria, on the 12th, of October. I've got my time zone, got my date, got my location, happy days, everything's good. Meters, perfect. So uh, the start of this question, the start of our course is before 1425, so I'm going to put give myself some space on my page above it. So I've got 1425 UT and then plus half an hour is 1455 I don't really want to go too far that way and then 1355 is going back half an hour so that is my tidal hour for high water if I go back one hour 1255 1155 I can see I've already not left myself enough room here or oh, except just I, I just about have so we've got minus one hour and minus two. And we can see that our start time of 11.55 is here. So we are going to be traveling in high water minus two for our tidal hour. Just going to give that a nice lap of honor. 
Okay, so we've got that sorted. So now that we know our title hour, we want to go and find our title information. So I'm going to just quickly flip the chart over to get the title diamond out. We're at title diamond N. Here we are. And we are high water minus two. So if I go all the way over to the left hand side here, at the beginning of it, it just shows me that hours before high water is up. Okay, then we've got our direction uh, is the first number, the direction of stream in degrees. And because it's on the chart, it's always in true degrees. Uh, all information on the chart is in true when it comes to bearings and degrees. Okay, then we have our spring rates and then we have our neap rates. So if we pop back to tile diamond N, N high water is in the middle, minus one, minus two. Okay, so I've got one, two, nine degrees true. And this is where it's really easy to start reading from the wrong column. And I've got 4.5 knots Ooh, at springs, which is pretty punchy. And 2.3 at neeps. And that's all I need from that. So I'm going to put this flat information down. Okay, so this is again tidal diamond N, high water minus two. Here's my tidal information. Okay, so I need to work out, I know what bearing my tide is on, my tidal vector is on. Oops, sorry, there we go. I know what bearing my tidal vector is on, uh, but I now need to work out where in between these two I'm lying. If I was going to guess this, um, I'm going to guess it's going to be about. Well, we're halfway between we're halfway between them and slightly on the side of neeps. So exactly halfway between those is going to be 3.6, I think. No, yeah, about three, something like that. So I let's call it it's gonna be about 3.4, 3.2, something like that. So we'll having a stab at it, but now let's just work it out using our computation of rates table. Oh, this video is going for 17 minutes. Sorry about that. I thought this was going to be a quick one. Okay, so computation of rates along the top. I've got my streams, my tidal stream rate in tenths of a knot. And down the side, we've got our range of tide, which we wrote down at the beginning of this question. So first of all, I need to put on my springs rate of knots in uh, marked off. So that was 4.5. So that's all the way up there. And my neeps is the blue line, and that was 2.3. Okay, I'm just going to draw that line on there. Okay, 2.3. And then my range of tide was 3.4 for the day, because high water was 5 metres, low water was 1.6. And the range of that is 3.4. So 3.4, take me to there, which is going to take me up to 3.1, 3.2 knots, something like that. Okay, so, yeah, so I've got 3.1 knots. So from this information now, I've interpolated, I'm just going to say int. Okay, and that comes out as 3.1 knots of tide. So, I've got my bearing and I've got my strength of tide, but what I've got to remember is that I'm only travelling for half an hour, so I'm going to half this, and it's going to give me 1.55. We're going to round that to 1.6. So, divided by 2 equals 1.55. So the tide is going to sweep us 1.6 nautical miles in that half an hour. Okay, so now I'm just left with plotting this on the chart. So plotting, so just looking at the bearing, 129, I'm just thinking in my head, okay, so that is heading in a southeasterly direction, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, somewhere in the middle, 129. So just to make sure I'm not going to plot my bearing the wrong way, because actually if we have a look at our course, 
we're heading south northwest and the tide is very much punching us in the face right now so one two nine There we go, Ooh, there we go, 129 degrees pointing on the top of my plotter. So I'm now gonna spin this around. Got my dead reckoning, pencil on the dead reckoning. Rotate the plotter so that my lines are north, happy days. And I'm gonna draw that line on. And now I'm just gonna measure on my latitude scale. Uh, what was it, 1.6 of a mile. One which gives me that. Okay, and so that is my estimated position. If I just do a quick latitude and longitude check on that. So my latitude is 45, 40, 6, 7, 8. So 45 degrees, 48 minutes decimal. Uh, two, four, ooh, call it five, shall we? Five, zero, north. And my longitude of my estimated position is there, which is five degrees, not quite 50. So it's going to be 49.6. So oh, oh, 005 degrees, 49 point, what did I say? Six, zero west. I'm not going to bother going more specific than that because it's utterly pointless. And just to double check my thing, so I've now I'm going to have my three arrows on here. Okay, it's a little bit of a messy triangle. And so I've got my EP, and that is my EP at the finish time of 14.25 SPDST. What was my depth? My depth was 20 metres. Well, look at that. There's a 20 metre contour line right there. So I'm pretty happy that I'm not far off that because I'm not in this channel. Hopefully I'm not so inaccurate that I'm over here, so we should hope that I am going to be somewhere on that contour line there. Part B was asking, what is my cog and sog, my course overground and my speed overground? So I know that if my boat has been heading this direction, but the tide's been punching me back a bit, then actually what I've actually done is travel to this point here in that half hour. So... I just need to plot this line on the chart. This is my course over ground. We have two feet on the ground, so two arrows. I'm not going to write the bearing of this on here because it's getting a little bit messy right now, but I am going to measure it. So whilst I've got it parallel, I'm going to flick this around to face due north. And that gives me a cog of two eight one and a half, let's call it two eight two. Cog is two eight two degrees true. And what is my sog? My sog speed over ground. My speed over ground is the distance of this. But one thing to remember after that is that that distance is five point oof. it's quite 5.1 miles so sog is not 5.1 miles but distance traveled in half an hour because remember this whole thing is for half an hour is 5.1 nautical miles traveled so my speed therefore is twice that so it's going to be sog equals 10.2 knots and those are my answers i've got my Estimated position lat and long. I've got my cog and my sog there. Oh, sorry, I realize you can't see that. Right, sorry for that being a 25 minute video. I thought that'd be quicker, but it goes to show you how long one of these questions can take you. And um, 
especially with the walkthrough like that, but I hope that helps make sense of everything. Cheers.